Hi everybody, Brian Bush, Top Crop Alliance, coming to you from a field edge today because I want to talk about a phenomenon we've been seeing in our corn and also in the soybeans, but probably in the corn right now I want to talk about. Notably, this yellowing on the lower leaves, also known as potassium deficiency or potash deficiency. What we're seeing right now is textbook examples of potassium deficiency. Let's look a little closer here. So on the edges of the leaf, we get kind of a yellowish appearance, even more of a brown appearance in some cases where we're really kind of short. That, if you look up in the textbooks, is the classic potassium deficiency look. So, why are we short on potassium? Well, it's been dry. Potassium is needed in large quantities, just like our other three macronutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. When the, dry, when the soil gets dry, the potassium that sits on those soil particles kind of contracts. The whole soil kind of contracts, tightens up, so we can have perfect potassium levels in this field, potash levels. And you know what happens? Because the soil is kind of contracted, the roots can't find the potassium on there, it can't pull off what it needs. Potassium is a mobile nutrient. That's why when you look at these symptoms here, you, saw, you find more issues on the lower leaves and fewer on the higher leaves. The plant will actively pull the potassium from these lower leaves, push up to that upper, upper growth here. So if you look across here, the upper leaves look a lot greener and healthier. So that's the plant actually moving it up there. Also number two, and probably more important to us, we got some recent rains. So that soil was able to absorb more water, expand, allow the roots to find the potassium it needs. Potassium is really taken up a lot during that grain growth phase, just like nitrogen, phosphorus, and most of our nutrients for that matter. Prior to V6, we take up very little, but from V6 to tassel, the majority of our potassium is taken up. In fact, by V10, We've taken up about 25% of the total potassium the plant's going to utilize throughout the growing season. And by tassel, we get to 75%. So for short during that time, that can really hurt us. In particular, potassium is important in stock integrity. So low potassium levels lead to more stock lodging. Potassium helps with water transportation, so moving water from the roots up to the ear. So for short on potassium there, we can see more smaller ears, uh, less healthy plants. Number three, potassium also helps fight off diseases. If you don't have sufficient potassium levels, you'll find more disease in those plants. So the nice thing is here, in many cases I've been in this year, the potassium deficiency is just limited to the outside couple rows. This is three rows in, and you can see here, green, healthy leaves all the way to the bottom here. So that makes it nice to know, this is probably cosmetics, this could be the outside of the field, not a widespread problem we're gonna find across multiple acres here. Potassium is kind of complex to talk about on how we manage this and, it, and talking about numbers on a video gets kind of difficult sometimes. In particular though, for nitrogen we often talk about what's your yield goal, how many bushels do we want to pull off that field. Well with potassium and phosphorus for that matter, we manage those differently. We manage those based off the soil types. The tri-state fertility guide that we use across Indiana, Ohio, Michigan sets critical levels. You have to have at least this level, we build up that level, maintain a certain level, and above that we even can draw down. One of the things that we do within Top Crop is help guys manage this complexity. So if you're seeing fields that you've got, you're not really pleased with, with the, how the fertilizer looks, the appearance of the crop, give us a call. We'd be happy to talk to you and walk you through our fertility system, how we can help you guys achieve your yield goals, hit the targets you want, because it's honestly a field by field and acre by acre decision to help you manage the fields to get the yields you expect. Fingers crossed this potassium deficiency should go away. I hope we won't see it from this point on or for many years to come. But in particular, when we get dry stretches, especially during that grand growth phase, V6 to VT, yellowing on the outside of these fields probably isn't that uncommon. And it's potassium deficiency, more often than not. As long as you're not finding that out in the middle of the field, it's gonna be okay. As always, if you have questions, please let us know.